every day. Every day somebody was going to jail. That became a, a way of life. And along in that time, every day I would have somebody coming and ask me to bail them out or help them with the bail. People in the neighborhood were very close and they would take up collections for anybody who got busted with a fine wasn't, or the bail wasn't too bad and uh, try to get them back on the street again. You see, it's very hard to understand that uh, crime during the years that uh, South Bronx was booming, this section of South Bronx that we were speaking about was booming, was a major part of the income of the whole community. When I used to come to the South Bronx in the morning, and I used to get a strange feeling, the adrenaline would start to pop, and I used to feel all exhilarated, just like, I guess, a boxer before a boxing match or a, a football player before a football game. You get all tensed up inside. Everybody used to get quite quiet right along in here, and girls would get quiet. I get quiet, everybody sort of get himself together, everybody but Frank, he was running off the face. Like I said, he was a little weird. He was my man, he was a little weird. Because you knew you was moving from safety to extreme danger. I kid you not, I'm in extreme danger. It looks like a big prison, right? shoot through. You can get a car stripped along in this street here. I don't think a mechanic in uh, all of New York State can uh, strip a car faster. Uh, hey, can somebody sort of stand in front of that water? Uh, they're filming here. We don't want to break the film. Can they sort of turn the water on? We're filming. Don't want to break the film. All right, thank you. All right, we appreciate that. Thanks a lot. Now uh, that's a monument to the old days. Uh, you can tell by some of the signs on the pole that's still there that uh, it was a pretty lively place. One day I came in and Frank Willingham had beat up on some on a customer or something, I think the customer got drunk and wouldn't leave or something. And uh, I had that sign put up there, and I meant it. Uh, what do I can tell you? Uh, my territory sort of ended right there at that uh, light down the bottom there. And me and another number man were in competition for booze. We supposed we sold the coldest wine in town. One time I went down there and he had eight cases, but he didn't have no more and said I couldn't have it because uh, he needed it for his other customer, the number man. And I won't mention his name. And we came back up here, told the club members there wasn't going to be no wine because they wasn't going to sell it to us. So we marched out of here, everybody in the club, marched down the liquor store and took it. They didn't pay him nothing. But that's the way it was in the South Bronx then.